Hello, and welcome to my channel. My name is Jonathan Cohn, and today I have my book review of the book Mars Life by Ben Bova. This is one of the books in his Grand Tour universe. I have also read the first books in the Mars portion of the universe titled Mars, which was one of my all-time favorite science fiction novels I've ever read. This is an all-time top science fiction book. And then I also read his book, Return to Mars, which was still very entertaining, but was a little bit disappointing in a few ways, but overall was very entertaining. And this book is up there with the first one. I think the first one has a little bit of an edge, but this book is a terrific, amazing, mind-blowing book. Ben Bova just scratches this itch for me when it comes to space exploration science fiction. I am always fascinated by the idea of what would it take for us to go and build a colony on another planet, to go and send an expedition to visit another planet. And so I like science fiction stories that explore the realistic elements of sci-fi. I also love space opera science fiction that tells, you know, big armies fighting in space and there's nothing scientific or realistic about it. Um, of course, this book series has a bit of the, the softer edge of science fiction in that uh, there are believed to be aliens uh, that, that were from ancient times that were wiped out. And so uh, part of exploring Mars is exploring those alien settlements um, or those old alien villages. And so it's not like the most hardest of sci-fi, but I mean, it's generally, this is a, this is a hard sci-fi series uh, generally. And so it starts with the first book, Mars, uh, Return to Mars, and Mars Life. And you can actually view this as a trilogy because this does tell the story of Jamie Waterman, who is the... Um, uh, the, 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 the scientist who is involved in all three books. And whereas the first two books are really just about the first little explorations of Mars, sending the first people to visit. That's what the first two books are about. This is about, we've already have the colony, but the colony is about to be destroyed because uh, there's no more funding for it. And you might think the funding for a colony as the main plot of the book, trying to find a way to make it so they get enough money to fund the colony, sounds super boring to most people. It's so entertaining because there are easy answers on how to fund this colony, but our main characters like Jamie and VJ, uh, they don't want to do that because they feel that will um, uh, break the integrity of their mission in Mars. And so because of that, they refuse to do that. So they have this risk that they could just shut everything down at any time uh, when the U.S. government announces it's pulling its funding because if the U.S. government pulls its funding, all the other countries are going to pull their funding. And if the other countries pull their funding and private investors are going to pull their funding and then they have no one left. And so it's all about finding some way to try to get that funding back, try to find someone who's willing to pay for the expedition. And part of that means that Jamie has to himself go back to this, uh, Mar back to the Mars base to try to see what's going on there and see how, what, what he can use, uh, in their favor. At the same time, there's this, uh, older scientist named Carl, uh, uh Carter Carlton and Carter is this, uh, man who he He's kind of had a, a rough life in that he was a scientist and he was a worked at a university, but he had some kind of allegations made against them that he vehemently denies. Uh, it's almost like this book was written back in 2008, but it's kind of got the Me Too allegations in it. And I'm like, man, that's prescient. And so Carter is trying um, uh he goes to Mars to try to escape all of these allegations, and while on Mars, he makes some incredible discoveries, and so that's part of what helps uh, kickstart Jamie's excitement about Mars again. Also in this book, there is a small subplot, and it only takes up, what, like two or three chapters that are only a couple pages long, but there's this little kid, this boy who grows up and he, all he wants is to, to, to do with science stuff. All he cares about is science and, and space exploration. And he cares about the Mars missions. And he's what he starts out as like a preteen and you see him as a teenager in this book. And you sympathize with him because everybody in the school system does not want him to be studying Mars. They do not care. And so you have this kid who is trying to beat the system. And some of the conversations that the kid has with the teachers or that the kid has with parents or other students are the exact same conversations that I have had with my students as a teacher or with some fellow parents at my school. The kind of 
uh, feeling that this the focus on space exploration is wrong for schooling is just so fascinating because that's so real. You know, this book was written back in 2008. Some of those themes are still present today. This book also deals with some terrific themes about religion and about, you know, when science stuff happens, how does religion react and how, how does uh, religion react to, the, um, uh, to, to natural disasters? How does it react to finding the aliens on Mars? Uh, the, 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 the fundamentalists, as this book calls them, called the, the new morality, which if, uh, uh, if, you, if, if you know American politics, as soon as I read new morality, all I could think of was the moral majority. And I thought that was so fascinating, especially since I went to Liberty University. Um, uh, anyway, but so, so this book has these really deep themes about religion and how they interact with science. And Bova does not paint all people at, who are religious as anti-science. In fact, there's some very religious people in this book who are pro-science. And just the discussion back and forth is just terrific. I disagree with a lot of Bova's ideas in this book. And yet it was so fascinating to read because he brings up interesting themes and ideas. And he, he, he has just one of the most heartbreaking sequences in here uh, with one of the characters. There was one character I was rooting for. I was like, you need, this needs to happen for this character. I'm so excited. This is, things are finally happening. And then he does this other thing with this character. And I was like, no. And so the character work I think is great. All of the characters I thought were great in this book. There's a few career, like you throw away characters, but that happens in most books. But but oh my goodness, so on every level, on the plot, I thought the plot was brilliant. Um, uh, on the characters, the characters were brilliant. The themes, themes were brilliant. I mean, on every level, Ben Bova knocked it out of the park. There is one subplot regarding Carl Carter Carlton, a subplot of his, that I felt was not properly resolved. And I don't know if that's because he's... He, his character is used in another book series. I'm going to guess he isn't. Um, uh, you never know. But uh, I really just think that it's Bova wanted to finish it in a certain way. And because of that, he just had to not give us resolution on this part of Carter's life. And I wish we had gotten that because I feel like it would have made the story more complete because this is the end of the Mars sequence. Um, it's just the three books. Uh, there are plenty of books in this Grand Tour universe, uh, and I have lots of them, and I plan to read lots of them soon. However, it just feels because this is the end of this sequence. I was like, I didn't get the resolution there. That is the only negative thing I have to say about this book. The only negative thing, because everything else was just handled brilliantly. If you are a fan of that kind of space exploration sci-fi, that hard sci-fi that, you know, I mean, it has, it has, uh, uh, Remnants of aliens. There's no actual aliens present, but there's remnants of aliens in this book. If you're willing to have that party in your science fiction, I think you'll love this book. And I just, I'm just blown away at how good a writer he is. Again, I gave the first Mars book like a 10 out of 10. Like this is near pretty much a perfect book. And I would give Mars Life like a 9.7 out of 10. Like it is so high up there. It's one of the best books I've read this year. And it's so high up there that it almost beats uh, uh, the first Mars, or at least it almost matches it. And I'm just so impressed that he could, two of the three Ben Bova books I've read are top tier science fiction books. And so I cannot wait to read more. I have his Jupiter book to read next. I have his Saturn book. I have his Mercury and his Venus books. I am so many Ben Bova books. I'm going to be reading so much of his. And he has so so many books outside of his Grand Tour universe that also excites me um, that I intend to read eventually. But for Mars Life, if you've read this book, let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. Do you think it's almost as good as the first book? Did you like the second book better? Uh, and if you have these kind of hard science fiction books that you like, let me know what you like to read uh, as well. And until next time, I'm Jonathan, and thank you for watching.